And then our barbarian, we have a pseudopod next to you. Rolls a 10. Woo, I'm good. Okay, we have another one, pseudopod. Rolls an 11. Magic number 14. All right. One last uh, pseudopod is going to go after the other dwarf who's standing next to you with the short sword. Oh, it rolls an 18 and damages him. And he is unconscious. And I yell, all right, Greenbeard, sizzle. grab them both and get them out of there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that is all it's going to do. Um, this one, actually, this one here is going to make a, it attacked you, and now it's going to move 5, 10, 15, 20, further into the room. Uh, Greybeard, you'll get an attack of opportunity as it passes by. Awesome. Just waiting to see the roll. Are they coming through slow tonight? Is that what's happening? Just type them on me anyway. Oh, sorry. Damage. Sorry. Damage not the uh, not it not to hit. One sec. Okay. Yeah, to hit D20 plus five, right? I think you can use your up arrow to go back to a roll you've already made and hit enter and then it'll roll again. Oh, yeah, didn't know that worked. How do I make it roll? I think just hit enter once you arrow back up to it. I think that's how I've done it. Mm, I got nothing. Hmm. I'll roll for you. Oh. He just rolled a 1d1. <laughs> yeah. There it is. I can feel the love, too great. <laughs> yep. So you hit uh, you hit it for 12 as it goes by you. And that is bludgeoning damage, which is good. Um, and as it goes by you, uh, you take four points of acid damage. It splashes onto you again. Damn it. Hey, that is the Black Pudding's turn. We are at Yarl. So, based on the movements from the two puddings that did the longer moves, can I get an idea of like how fast they're moving? Like what their general range might be? Compared to what we would have? It seems comparable to what the humans have. And, and Tigray, one passed by you, you actually would get a attack of opportunity also if you had a weapon out. Yeah, I'll dagger. Okay. So you'll get a free attack on it also. So, yeah, go ahead. Keep going, Jar. I'll just I'll keep an eye on what he's doing. Okay. So the, the damage that appears to be splitting it is the slashing you, you take four points of damage Tigre from acid hitting you when you do that okay so um two from what you could forward, tell I mean back. you saw you definitely saw the lightning split it okay um you watched you watched Greybeard attack 
I don't know if necessarily you saw what happened when he attacked and split. And now the couple of times have split with several bunch of things happening. So I guess, I mean, maybe make a roll to see if you're catching all of that. Maybe a perception roll, a good perception roll. You're catching what's happening. Yeah, yeah, you're you're noticing that the swords, whenever they're hitting those creatures, they're splitting into more entities. So slashing and piercing and lightning. No, you notice that piercing did not split them. Like the arrows didn't split them, the dagger didn't split them, the javelin did not split them. Didn't Morak split them? Warwick is using a short sword that was given to him. Right, and that has piercing damage. That's slashing. Isn't it? No. Uh, short sword should be slashing. Uh, in the compendium, it says it's piercing. It's piercing on my character sheet. He's a dwarf. He would definitely slash with it. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure a sword is slash. No. Isn't it Roman style? Just stabbing out with it? Huh. Long sword slashing. I don't have my books. Yeah, to me, the only thing that would be a, a piercing to me sword-wise would be a rapier. To me, I just a regular sword, sword is a sword. It could, it could be both. I mean... Okay, I just want to make sure. Rule, I, I, was... I don't think the rule lets you decide what... I mean, I kind of let Tigre do it with bashing with his axe, I guess. Even though it's not a bashing weapon. Okay. Um... But your knowledge is telling you it's the slashing that and the lightning so far had split him. You have no idea if there's more stuff or not, but that's what seems to be splitting him. Alright. Well... Kind of toast. Um, so you guys just hit that for. So both of you hit that one in front of me. So I'm going to. Hmm. I'm going to. Oh, crap! I can't do that either, man. I'm going to back up one and go ahead and roll your attack. Take uh, four bludgeoning damage from a pseudopod that snaps out at you. And your armor gets a minus one to AC now. I'm not what, what kind of armor are you wearing? None. Oh, okay. So your clothes are now starting to dissolve a little bit. All right. A couple more of those and you'll be a naked drow. All right. And I'll throw a dart. Um, that do anything uh yeah so you see the dart sizzle into it you see some of the it kind of break it definitely has a skin texture to it even though the rest of it is still a liquid inside and some of that liquid comes out you hear the sizzle of the dart as the dart begins to dissolve you, you realize you're not getting that dart back um but other than that it's still Man. still an amorphous creature um So I'll yell out, uh, does anybody have a healing potion or can heal or anything? I believe the proper yell out is, medic! Well, I'll come to them. <laughs> My response is I can, but I need everyone to get as far away from these blobs as they can. Well, the problem is, yeah, so I had the same idea, but the we're not going to be able to hoard the the humans anywhere like no have to protect them 
And I yell, Thunderwave along with it. Oh, okay. Um, Alright, so I'm going to... I'm going to back up here. And... Let's see. I'm going to use my last key point to dodge as a bonus action. So... I'm now in dodge. Okay. And I guess that's me. Yep, so we see the smoldering clothes of our monk uh, backs up and stands in a defensive formation, um, bringing us up to the panicking humans and our downed dwarf. Move that. So I'm going to make him make a death save. Mark. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, so, on to the other human. So, this guard has a scimitar, but he heard you yell not to cut it. Didn't somebody yell that? Yeah, I did. I said, Pierce, don't slash. Okay. Um, he's just going to turn the thing over and just smack it with the hilt. Basically, the back end of it. Just So I'll just give him the same damage, but it'll be bludgeoning. Um, and he's going to... Uh, she, actually. This one will she. Um, we'll make an attack. Even though this is a spear, 1d6, I'm just going to give him the 1d6 without the plus one. Actually, I give him the average. Okay, so I'm going to roll this to hit. Uh, no, five is a miss. So it tries to hit it, but doesn't seem to do any damage to it. Um, and moves, staying in contact with it moves to try to block its route to the panicking people. She moves to the route to try to block the panicking people and she takes some acid damage from hitting it and looks very wounded but still standing. Everybody else is as far back as they can get. Graybeard's turn was before yours. At least he could disengage. Oh, no. It is before mine. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Armel looks to the T-Gray is too. <laughs> I have to look at which direction you guys are looking at to figure out which one's which. <laughs> yeah, all you, all you have to have some words. Yeah, you all look the same. <laughs> all right. Um... That is everybody on the humans and guards that can go. We're back at the top of the order. And Armel needs to make a death save for us. 20 inbound would be good. Done. Um, nine is under 10. Yeah, so you've got one success, one fail so far. Mark. Um, all right. That brings us to Greybeard. You have a staff in your hand, axe on the floor, smoking, two unconscious bodies next to you. What is Greybeard going to do? He typed in AFK there, so... Oh, did he? he? Might have run off to put his... One I think that's, that's short for grab the two unconscious <laughs> people and run away, I think. <laughs> or at a minimum, his friend, his friend the druid. There you go. Let's put a gag on the house elves. 
Or are those the two L salves that he was going to use for bludgeoning? <laughs> well, here we go. Let's let's add another complication because you guys probably don't have enough, right? <laughs> let's add a turn. I think they call that insult to injury. I'm going to take this goblin. What? And I'm going to give him a turn. No. We're taking away your goblin privileges, mister. <laughs> and we'll put it on turn to take up some time. A 13. What you see is coming out of this cave, um, and you guys see this on the side, you see a stream of pint-sized goblins, maybe some that look older. They're all in rags, no weapons at all. Some are carrying smaller goblins. Some are dragging some along, and there's a stream of them that begin to run for the cave entrance. No weapons or anything, um, but they come streaming out of this cave, and there's a bunch of them. I'm going to be so pissed if they can get away and we can't. So we'll have them start streaming out of the cave. And you definitely notice these are not like the goblins you face. They're not wearing armor. They're wearing tattered clothes. Um, many of them are female. Many of them are carrying goblin children. Some of them are old and infirm, and they begin to exit the, the cave as fast as they can. Unhindered. You can climb up the 10 foot rise. Oh, I guess they're going around the side. Almost makes you feel sorry for them. Can someone make noise in that direction? <laughs> All right, is Greybeard back? GB's back, and he's going to be back. in trouble. Run away. Run away. Hey, uh, hey, it's yeah. your turn, GB. So, look what you caused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. Um, cool. Is there, is there any way I can, if I drop the quarterstaff, grab both... Morak and Armel. Armel, how much do you weigh? Oh, I'm skin and bones, dude. He's he's <laughs> bled a lot, so he doesn't weigh as much. <laughs> Would that matter if if uh, Graveyard was raged? Probably not, but he's not raged. Oh, he's not. My bad. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's I am say, say, let's say 180. Okay. Minus the remains of my dissolving armor. The other dwarf's pretty heavy, so I will let you. You can pick up one and make a move. If you try to pick up two, you're gonna have to try to make a strength check to see if you can do it. If you fail, I'm only gonna let you move half as far with the one you grab. If you succeed, I'll let you grab two of them in your arms and make your movement. No dashing, just a movement. Sounds good. Candidates are two options with one. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, strength check or an athletics check? Strength check. You're trying to pick up two heavy bodies that are limp. Yeah, 10, because you got disadvantage. Is that correct? No, I have advantage. I'm still raged. Oh, you are raging. Don't forget you've got bardic inspiration. Okay, yeah, yeah. So the 15, you're not disadvantaged. So yeah, you grab the two and you can make a movement, not a dash. You can use one extra die six for your roll if you need to. Uh, yep. The 15 does it. Okay, then never mind. 
where where are you gonna go and then I'll move the other tokens to where you're gonna go so, um he's gonna go block the goblins <laughs> Dude, I am so tempted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you ain't getting. You're gonna become. You're gonna become pudding fire. What would Ian do? So the answer is to. Ian's gonna kill all the goblins. <laughs> I know the baby goblins. He's gonna throw that. that gonna kill baby goblins. He's gonna throw that out. splinter arrow. <laughs> all right, I. I think the best move is to move towards the exit 